the keystone depleted species is fecal bacterium prausnitzi. Um, and um, that is um, that that is lost in the course of COVID-19. The mechanism by which it's lost isn't clear, and so I'm fascinated by Dr. Bronya's work, which explains um, a mechanism that I had not anticipated. Now, another study looking at F. Prausnitzki um, found that the gut microbiome at disease onset predicts the development of PASC. Um, and the gut microbiome of patients who develop PASC is characterized by lower levels of F. Prausnitzi when they first get sick and higher levels of, an, of a couple of other species. Um, Ruminococcus navis in particular can be very inflammatory. Um, the largest inverse correlation between the development at PASC at six months and the microbiome at the time of disease onset was with these but butyrate bacterial species, F. Prausnitzki, and also a bifidobacterium species called Pseudocatenulatum. Um, another issue that has come up within the setting of COVID-19 is whether persisting viral um, infection can contribute to PASC. Uh, there are a number of studies. Um, in the interest of time, I won't go into all of them here. Um, but there are a number of studies indicating that it's likely that there is continuing viral infection in people who develop PASC. And this has been looked at in people with neurologic symptoms. A program that I've put together is a high fiber polyphenol rich diet, which increases the growth of F. Pausnitzi. Adherence to a Mediterranean diet increases F. Pausnitzi, uh, F. Pausnitzi. Prebiotic oligosaccharides may as well. Um, we can raise the question, and maybe we'll try to answer this, whether that's actually desirable given Dr. Bronia's work. Um, there are several probiotics and prebiotics that increase the growth of F. Prausnitzi. And I just, um, um, it's become very clear that the, that the outcome of COVID-19 is very much impacted by T lymphocytes, in particular cytotoxically C lymphocyte, T lymphocytes that kill virally infected cells. They play an important role in recovery from viral infection. They're critical for vaccine-induced protection against this virus. And I think there's been way too much influence, um, importance attributed to neutralizing antibodies. It's really the T effector memory cells that are cytotoxic lymphocytes that are important for protection. Now, lactobacillus consumption through yogurt, fermented foods, or as a supplement, increases the number and activity of cytotoxic T lymphocytes. Lactobacillus plantarum um, may be particularly important. And the question of whether, do you want to give probiotics to people with COVID-19 because of the bacteriophage action of, um, of the virus uh, I think that's a very important question. I've only seen one study that might suggest an answer to that, a study from Spain, and I don't have a slide on it, I hadn't prepared for it, in which um, a fixed probiotic uh, combination that included a strain of lactobacillus plantarum was given to people who are acutely ill versus uh, placebo. And the people who got the probiotic had a much better, they had a shorter course and a better outcome than people who did not, who received the placebo um, that did not contain the probiotics. So at least when it comes to lactobacilli, there's evidence of benefit. Um, the, um, yeah, there are a couple of other things that may enhance T effector memory cells, um, which are a specific type of cytotoxic T cells. Um, these cells thrive on fatty acid oxidation, the availability of butyrate and the presence of lactobacilli. So a high fiber, adequate fat, low sugar diet with fermented foods may be helpful. Carnitine has been shown to help their development and may be a worthwhile dietary supplement. 
been thinking about long COVID as really a manifestation of bacterial toxicity, but rather as the absence of butyrate producing bacteria. So my protocols have been finding ways to enhance the growth of healthy bacteria, um, control inflammation, which is essential, usually with um, substances like curcumin and resveratrol, uh, quercetin. And the important thing in dealing with natural products like this is um, there can be big problems when you're trying to go from laboratory to clinical practice because they're not that well absorbed. Um, if we're dealing with the gut, systemic absorption and systemic effects are not so important because you really want the effects in the gut. So if something like quercetin is not well absorbed, but it stays in the gut, well, maybe that's where you want it. 